Copyright Monsanto, made in Belgium. If you see any snails, don't spray them because they'll be inedible. So watch the strawberries. I'd encourage European farmers to take a look at the Roundup Ready technology. Oh, uh, Frankly, yeah. it's very good for the environment. It's a sustainable system. So, give it a try. Monsanto. For 20 years, I've traveled the globe, and everywhere I've heard about this American multinational. But what I've heard hasn't always been positive. Wanting to know more, I surfed the web for months to put the pieces of the puzzle together. On its website, Monsanto positions itself as an agricultural company that aims to help farmers produce healthier food while reducing agriculture's impact on our environment. Its leading product is Roundup, the world's best-selling herbicide for the last 30 years. the world leader in biotechnology. 90% of the GMOs grown on the planet belong to them. Most of them have been genetically modified to resist the application of Roundup, like Roundup Ready soybeans. What's at stake with GMOs? And could the company's path to shed some light on what the company is or claims to be today? Founded in St. Louis, Missouri in 1901, it was not always an agricultural company. It was one of the largest chemical companies of the 20th century. Chemistry is working for us, and very likely Monsanto is working for us. Monsanto, where creative chemistry works wonders for you. The wonders boasted about in this commercial made Monsanto one of the most controversial companies in the industrial era. Agent Orange, Aspartame, Bovine Growth Hormone, PCBs. These chemically created oils used worldwide as coolants and lubricants in electrical equipment were the jewels in Monsanto's crown for over 50 years. They were called Auroclor in the United States, Pyrrhalin in France, and Clofen in Germany until they were banned in the early 1980s. Monsanto PCB. A Washington Post article from 2002. Monsanto hid decades of pollution. It happened in Anniston, Alabama.
here, where they put the cement in there. It comes from the plant, discharging to PCBs all the way down through here. And it was poisoning. Uh, they never told anybody. But they told the state. The state didn't tell us. PCB Monsanto knew. But what exactly did they know? An environmental organization in Washington, D.C., headed by Ken Cook, has put internal Monsanto files online. Most of them are classified confidential. FYI and destroy. Exposure to PCBs provokes systemic toxic effects and acne form skin eruption. In 1961, two workers developed hepatitis symptoms after a pipe broke in a factory using PCBs. In 1966, Monsanto scientists placed fish in Snow Creek's water. All were dead in three and a half minutes. Pollution, a letter addressed to sales executives in 1970. This is the one that really tells you the story. They're saying, we can't afford to lose one dollar of business. Their neighbors in Aniston were not told about the, the poisoning that they were inflicting upon them because they didn't want to lose one dollar. It was only when lawyers went to court on behalf of people in Aniston and forced the company through the legal system to disclose these internal secret documents that we knew what they knew. They knew the truth from the very beginning. They lied about it. They hid the truth from their neighbors. They hid the truth, in many cases, from the government authorities. And when they did share information from, with government authorities that should have been acted upon, the government of authorities, instead of siding with the people, were being poisoned and sided with the company. They sided with Monsanto. It was outrageous, absolutely unforgettable. <laughs> no, these are all your relatives? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, they ain't all them. I got some more here. <laughs> How much you have in here? 63.8 in the blood. If they took a fatty biopsy of him now, he probably would talk to scales of about three or four thousand parts of me or more. And which is a level acceptable? I mean, acceptable is two point, uh, two part per billion. That's the standard all around the world. But these people, we have more in our bloods and in our body than actually anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. It's usual here to speak about his PCB oh, level. We all talk about it because it became a household word now. Kids, you can run up to me. Mr. Baker, I I got tested. I had three point part per billion in my blood. Uh, how, how long do you think I got? But that's a horrible story. <laughs> but what do scientists think about it? On the web, you can find numerous... But that's a horrible story. But what do scientists think about it? On the web, you can find numerous articles concerning the effects of PCBs on human health. David Carpenter is one of the most qualified specialists in the field. He carried out the testing for the Aniston residents. We all have PCBs in our bodies. The polar bears and the penguins have PCBs. And what has happened is in the past, there were a few sites where PCBs were released. But over time, they've gone into the air, they've gone into the water, they've transported, so the whole world is now contaminated with PCBs. The issue is that many diseases are caused by PCB exposure. The one everyone knows about is cancer. In 2001, 20,000 Aniston residents filed two lawsuits against Monsanto. Monsanto and its subsidiary, Solucia, settled by paying $700 million to compensate the victims, to clean up the site, and to build a specialized hospital. But no Monsanto executive was ever sued. Under American law, in most instances, it's very rare for executives or 
officials in these companies to be held criminally responsible. So we have the civil system, the civil courts. We make them pay. And the truth of the matter is, in most instances, uh, the price these companies pay decades later is a fraction of their profits. And this is why it pays to keep these problems secret. And it makes you wonder what they might be keeping secret now. Uh, I have to say, we would never trust a company like Monsanto to tell the truth about a pollution problem or about a product. We would never trust them. Ken Cook says we would never trust a company like Monsanto. So what about Roundup, the world's favorite herbicide used by gardeners and farmers alike? Nutshell, in the United States, the Secretary of Agriculture doesn't stand a chance against the multinationals. But just how are GMOs regulated in the United States? The most crucial policy on the subject was published by the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, which is legally responsible for regulating the safety of food and medicine. Title, Foods Derived from New Plant Varieties. Date, May 29, 1992. Principle 1. Foods derived from genetic modification are regulated within the existing framework that applied to foods developed by traditional plant breeding. Obviously, the FDA decided not to create a special category for GMOs. For further information, contact James Mariansky, who headed the biotechnology department at the time. scientific community. With GM crops, they had neither. What FDA 